bone saw is ready. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'm playing Nahiri, Forged in Fury. This is a new commander from March of the Machine, The Aftermath. I think I got that title right. And she's very unique because she has affinity for equipment. Now, this deck actually started as a deck submission from Lurin5450 on my stream. I changed about half the cards, so uh, the deck isn't that similar, but it still follows the same theme of playing lots of inexpensive equipment and then going crazy by casting Nahiri for three or two mana, because again, she has affinity for equipment. And I guess if you don't know what affinity is, it reduces the cost of the card. And it even reduces the cost of the commander tax, which is great. Nahiri has another ability though, which lets her cast things either for free or just from exile. Whenever you attack with an equipped creature, with Nahiri on a board for each equipped creature, you get to exile the top card of your deck and you can play it this turn. And if it happens to be in equipment, you get to cast it for free. This is great. It's card advantage in Boros, and it gives you a great reward for especially the equipments that come attached to their very own tokens. I'm talking about cards like Vermiridin. We've got the Blayhold Ward Whip. Uh, it has its Rebel token. We've also got things like the Ancestral Blade, Barbed Spike. There's a lot of cards that come with their own token and equip themselves, but if you don't want to be paying equip costs, don't worry. We also have Sigarda's Aid in this deck, which was thankfully added not too long ago, and my good friend Sram, who draws us cards when we're casting these super low cost equipments. This deck you're going to notice has a very, very low curve. That's because we want to throw out all of these one drops, make Nihiri cheap, swing in, get to cast things, and maybe even get things like Helm of the Host rolling where we make more copies of Nihiri. And if you're thinking, oh, but Helm of the Host, it's so expensive to equip. What if you don't have Zagarda's aid out? Don't worry, we also have Kemba's Outfitter here uh, able to reduce those costs. Or things like Brunor, who lets you attach an equipment for free each turn. There are other cards that have similar abilities that reward you for using lots of in these equipments. Uh, I have Halvar here, which lets you shuffle around your equipments and auras, I guess, and some super duper strong swords like Sword of Body and Mind and Sword of Forge and Frontier. Now, I actually did have the Demir Sword in this deck at one point. I took it out because there's just not a lot of instants or sorceries in this deck. We're very much focused on the aggro and not on the removal game plan. Uh, by the way, the key ultimate wonderful thing you can do with this deck is swing in with equipped creatures and then happen to hit things with flash. Now, Sigarda's Aid gives your equipment flash, but some of these equipment have flash on their own. And if you're casting them for free, it's even better. I'm talking about leaving it to the Ember Cleave. It's a great card. It's really fun in this deck. This deck overall is a blast to play. And if you like a very aggressive and equipment-based board style, you're gonna like this deck. So let's take this deck into the queue and see how many swords we can hold. The Goshen Tie of Life's Origin. Five color shrines. Bad news, I don't have any one drop equipment here. Good news, I have some really good equipment in hand. I'm going to keep this and I'm going to hope that we draw some one and two drops since our deck is chock full of them. And boom, Basilisk Collar. There's our one drop. Goshen Tie of Life's Origin, by the way, goes wide, makes shrine tokens, and is oftentimes an enchantress deck that can be hard to deal with. Basilisk Collar gets me Death Touch Lifelink. We got Double Strike Trample, plus one, plus one, plus two, plus two, protection from red and green. Note green, green. Also, uh, yikes. That's a lot of enchantment draw and card stuff. Kind of terrifying. Let's go for the, uh, let's get the War Whip out here. Whip it. Whip it good. Uh, way to hold War Whip, I wanted to start with this because it reduces equip costs, which is kind of nice if we wanted to, say, play the Sword of Forge and Frontier next turn and attack with it. I believe we'll be able to, but it would make this equipment fall off because protection from red and green, and this is a red equipment. That's just the way it goes. Sometimes you gotta, uh, you gotta pay up. Go ahead and grab some lizard blades, and we're going to give you a bit of death touch, a little bit of life link. Just trying to bring the Hiri's cost down. And now I'm going to scooch this over to our other 
little buddy on the battlefield. Lizard Blade also has Double Strike. First Strike combined with Death Touch is just a really good combination. It really is. The Lifelink's also not bad either. Sithis gonna keep drawing them cards. Goshen Tai, if they play any shrines, gonna get them more shrines. And for five mana, they can just bring back enchantments from the graveyard. This can be real spooky. Yeah, currently, they do have a colorless creature, which sort of Forge and Frontier, not able to do much about. That's where the Ember Cleave will come in handy. Can't be used with the sort of Forge and Frontier because protection from red, but still pretty nice. Ooh, Showdown of the Skulls. I don't see any shrines, but I do see more Enchantress cards. Ooh. Looks like they're just throwing down Sacred Foundry this turn. And choosing what to discard. They discarded two lands. Do I want to just leave it to Cleaver here? Or do I want to get these triggers and draw some cards? I want to see what we get here. Got a Hex Gold Hoverwing and a Nettle Cyst. Both of these will be cast for free post combat. Wow, you trade both of those for this? Okay. I'll take a trade. I don't need creatures on the battlefield. They're able to bring some stuff back repeatedly with the Spirit Sisters call. That's pretty cool. But we're going to get some more stuff out here. We got a Nettle Cyst. Comes with a little guy. Hex Gold Hoverwings. And, uh. Phew, have the thing. Looking good. We're not going to move the Nettle Cyst over. I really like the Nettle Cyst where it is. Sunfall. Ah, it was a, it was a sacrifice there. So they've exiled all creatures. We're going to move Nahiri back to the command zone. And unfortunately, I don't have any way to give haste, and I don't have any way to attack him this turn. But I can replay Nahiri. We're going to play Bone Saw. It's ready. Sword of Forge and Frontier. We're going to play Nahiri. This has its reduced equip cost, so it only costs one. Bone Saw is free. Let's go. We now have a Nahiri with protection from red and green. Hopefully, they will not be able to remove Nahiri. No removing Nahiri. No blocking, no nothing. Finding the old gods. That's green, but it can still destroy the equipment. Uh, it's a black green source. It looks like they're destroying the Sword of Mountain Dew and Doritos. Nahiri's still funky and chunky and huge. She's a 7 4. And now she doesn't have protection from red. You know what she's ready to do? She's ready to cleave it. This uh, this Phyrexian token could be animated, become a 4 4. They're taking a look at my equipment. They're probably thinking, huh? What do I have to be afraid of? Nothing. Here's a goblin. It's a good idea. I love a good goblin. Ooh, Kemba's Outfitter. It's essentially free for me here. One, two, three, four, five. Just have to make sure I have five mana up. Target equipment. I control. Perpetually gains. Equip one. Use Nettle Cyst. So we can equip it for one to Nihiri. Now we're going to swing in with Nihiri. She triggers. That's cool. Who cares? Do you want to block? That's cool. It's not enough. Hit for 12, and then another 14. GG Goshentai! The only orc is playing Tiamat, and I've got things I can play. So we're going to keep this hand. Um, I have the Axe Guard Armory coming in tapped, but if I start with the Sokens on, I still have two equipments I can play. One on turn one, one on turn two. Or I could just draw mana like this. Easy, easy peasy. Uh, let's throw down the Boots of Speed first. These booties give haste. That's good because 
The Nahiri likes to attack. It's nice. Uh, next turn, we can either go for the Ancestral Katana, or the Leather Armor, or now Swiftfoot Boots, or we could go for, uh, I don't know, just optimizing these mana, making sure that we're actually able to like play things next turn. So now we have two beautiful one drops there. Mm, and a Carnelian Arb of Dragonkind. That does make sense for Tiamat, she being the Dragon Queen. Uh, the Foundry Beetle will reduce the cost of some of my future little bits here. Now I could hold up Swords to Plowshares, or I could just get some equipment on. I think that this is fine. Go fast, protect my beetle, and my beetle is going to reduce the cost of an artifact in my hand by one, assuming it survives. Uh, we've got Boots, Helm of the Host, and Katana here. Um, of these, I would love to see a cost reduction on Swiftfoot Boots. Uh, bringing this down to one means that I could play it and then play Nahiri. Same with the Ancestral Katana. Ooh, Ravaz of the Claw! He's not a dragon, but he ramps to dragons. Um, Ravaz of the Claw is very, very cool and uh, lets you replay your dragons from your graveyard, which is kind of nice with Tiamat, who oftentimes overfills the hand because she finds a lot of dragons for you, and then lets you recast from the graveyard. Um, all right, we could go for Nahiri uh, and just swinging in here. We could play the Sword of Body and Mind, try and get some protection out, or we could Swords to Plowshare. I'm going to throw down Nahiri because that's what this deck does. It plays the Nahiri. We attack in. What did we get? We got a mountain. I haven't played a land yet for turn. I would have rather it be a plains so I could throw this in. Didn't get it. That's fine. We're going to go ahead and re-equip and re-equip a little more. Uh, Nihiri now has Ward 1, so she is slightly better protected. The Foundry Beetle, however, is a, a little naked buggy bug. Little naked bug. An opportunistic dragon does let them steal an artifact here. What would you like to steal? My boots of speed? My leather armor? Looks like um, whatever they grab, though, will just lose all abilities. But but it won't be on my creature. All right, so it looks like they targeted leather armor. So this is technically not under my control right now. So it does not count toward Nahiri's... Um, toward Nahiri's uh, count for discounts. But it does count towards um, her attacking in while equipped. Yes, I know that's really weird. That's just how it is. Hmm, Sword of Body and Mind got a discount. Don't mind if I do. We're gonna go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna throw it onto this bugabug. I'm gonna play this land in case I need to Swords to Plowshares kind of hoping that they like sacrifice something here thinking they can replay it as right, so we hit Chandra and Valduk no equipment what a shame Ooh, okay sort of body of mind by the way protection from green and blue wait until they sacrifice really didn't sacrifice the opportunistic dragon I would have thought they would, um, because Opportunistic Dragon could be recast from the graveyard using Ravaz. Bye, Chandra. Bye, Valduk. You guys are great. Sorry to not see you here. Sorry to care, Ridges! Four damage to any target. Who do you hit? There's Nahiri lit on fire. Would I like to move my commander to the command zone? Yes! Our boots now cost one. Those are some good boots. A helmet of host also nice and discounted here. Uh, let's go ahead and throw down some booties. I could just play Nahiri, give her haste here. Um, she would trade with the tyrant. That's not too bad. Or we could throw down more equipment. Maybe play her next turn. Are you a warrior? You're an equipment insect. You would be. You silly little bug. Just playing out all the equipment for no particular reason. Nope. Definitely not trying to go for a two mana Nahiri next turn. That would be wild. Uh, something notable is that they have the Carnelian Orb of Dragonkind, 
which does mean that they will have haste on a dragon, which means I could very suddenly die. Um, Lathless with haste, speaking of which, uh, they have a lot of damage coming in here. They don't have enough mana to pump their, uh, their board with us. So worth uh, taking a look at here. All right, Nahiri. I don't have enough mana to put Nahiri in a hat, but I do have enough mana to put the boots on her. Let's give her some boots. Wait, let's play the Arm Scavenger first since it reduces the equip cost by one, making this free to equip. Love that for us. Big enough to trade with a dragon. Hmm. Trying to think if I need to shuffle these around a little bit. If you need the plus two and you need the plus one. You can also put it all on one gal. Don't don't mind me, I'm just uh every day I'm shuffling. Ineffective mana usage there, but I wanted to make sure each of these had at least six power. We swing in, Nahiri triggers, and gets me a nettle cyst. So good news, bad news. Good news is we're swinging in with a good amount of damage here, and they might feel pressured to block. They don't actually have to block, though. We're not dealing lethal damage here. All right, that's fine. Uh, we get a free nettle cyst. found a land and we're gonna put the boots on arm scavenger and the leather armor on nettle cyst and the boots the other boots on this guy too sure why not you know what you also get protection you're so well protected i love you you're a good germ so if they didn't block last term, I think that they might have been able to kill me just off of Lathless's pump ability. But I think that they were playing cautiously, um, thinking like, oh, maybe I won't quite have enough. I don't know. It's, it's very hard when your opponent is swinging at you with this much stuff to really pay attention to it. All right, so Lathless gets a dragon. Cornelian Orb of Dragonkind, I assume, gives Tiamat haste. Okay, no, I, I actually saw what happened here. This is something that happens when you uh, let Ottoman Tapper, our dear friend Auto Tapper, uh, make decisions for you. So Auto Tapper is perfect, 99% at a time. And 1% at a time, it's awful. Carnelian Orb of Dragonkind, if it uses its mana to cast a dragon, gives that dragon haste. But Orb of Dragonkind seems to have taken the mana from the Carnelian Orb and then turned it into two other mana instead of taking mana from literally any other source on the battlefield. Any other source. The flying actually seems like I might need it here, either for attacking or for blocking. Um, I'm going to take this Cliffhaven Kite Sail. It's in exile. Here's Nahiri. I know what I need. It's two Nahiris. I know what I need. I need a flying Nahiri. I know what I need. I need flying Nahiri to go fast. Where's the fast going? Boots of speed. Give her hexproof too. I don't think we really need to. You have this. Actually, wait, you... Armor. I want to get as many cards off the top as I can. Let's just swing. We're going to get double triggers because we have twice the Nahiris. Boy, howdy. Them some cards. All right, what do we got? Anything with flash. We have something with flash here, but I already pressed the, the big button. Yes, move my commanders to the command zone. And we're going to cast some stuff for free here. Uh, you. You. You can also play a land. So let's me play Skrelv. But I think we got to get ourselves a blocker here. And maybe protect that blocker. 
Sorry, Skrelv. I know, I love you too. You're such a- you're such a friend. You're such a friend, but now I cannot play you. Imagine, Skrelv, with the Black Blade Reforged. Imagine! Miriam! Whenever they get a non-token dragon entering the battlefield, they're gonna get a token copy of that dragon that's not legendary. They also just have, like, a lot of damage here. Boundary Beetle gonna give a discount. Not that I have anything to discount here. We got a Hammer. Gold Vein Pick. Mask of Immolation. Um, I don't have enough mana to do that. But I still really like the hammer, so I'm going to take it. By the way, these are both green-blue, which means that they're not able to block whoever has the sort of body in mind. They didn't attack in, forced me to uh, lose my soldier token here. They have a Kyodai, Terror of the Peaks, and Darigats. It looks like they want to kill me through Terror of the Peaks. Do have some Trample here. We have Trample, Haste, Make a Thing Big, and Nahiri. Who could, we can make the big. Uh, I might try to go for a uh, bit of a Nahiri Tron this turn, because I think it might get me there. If it can only be blocked by Lathless and Dragon Token. And we give a lot of buffs to her. I think she'll make it through here. Um, Orb of Dragonkind, I think, was what was holding priority. Or Lathless. Um, Nahiri. Nahiri, and the first thing we want to do is we want to give her... Hexproof. And haste. The haste is nice, too. Okay, she survived that. We're going to equip. We're going to equip. And we're going to equip. And you know what? We got some other stuff we can throw on her for free, too. How about some of this? Some of this! Let's go, Nihiri Tron! Let's go, Nihiri Tron! Let's get him! Let's go! Bigger! More! More! Let me swing in. With a very, very, very large Nihiri, forged in fury. She's a 33, 31. She's doing amazing. GG, the only orc. Kings of Leon is playing Muldrotha, the Grave Tide. I can definitely keep this hand. It's got all my colors. It's got cheap equipment. It's got protection from one of their three colors. And that's enough for me. So, Muldrotha, have you run into him before? He's great. Or I guess she's great? Yeah. She bloomed. Multani's daughter. Uh, Muldrotha is a big ol' elemental that lets you replay any kind of permanent from the graveyard. I'll go ahead and play this out as a land. Looks like they've got a Wishclaw Talisman. Hmm. I don't like this. They're making wishes, which means they're probably wishing for some kind of card that's really good against me. Uh, something that, I don't know, destroys artifacts repeatedly. That would be rough. That would be rough. Well, at least I get to have it now. I get to make a wish. Play the sword. Reduce Nahiri's cost. I'm holding on to this. I don't know what wish I want to make yet. I'm, I'm thinking about it. Settle in the wild. They get a land and they get a four drop permanent into their hand. Hmm, rabbit battery. Looks like we can play Nihiri this turn. Get out the battery. Tight sail. Nihiri. 
and a swing. We're going to get the trigger off this. Got Tajiri Shelter, unfortunately. Can't be cast for free, so it's just going to go away. Crux of Fate, a board wipe. Okay, that's fair. How about a stick? And another stick. I don't have anything here giving haste, so just more equipments reducing the hero's cost. She's back down to three mana. Hello, yes. They, we know they have a four cost permanent in hand from Settle the Wilds. And it's Binding the Old Gods. That's a great card for them to have. Are they destroying the Cleaver? They are. All right, so that's going to stop me from getting that kind of crazy value off of it. I'm going to play this land that does come in untapped, so I'm able to equip the Sword of Mountain Dew and Doritos, so I can swing in here. Sweet, that's a free short sword. Get that. Th these are just going to go away, unfortunately, and we can go completely empty-handed here. This is going to bring them up to six lands, so this comes in tapped. Nice. Key to the Archives! Gets them two mana in any combination of colors and also puts a card into their hand. Now, they can drop whatever permanent they want because they can bring it back with Maltrotha. Great graveyard recursion there. Uh, I think we're going to go for this Beam Town Beat Stick here. And I'm not going to equip anything else because I want to maintain my mana. Waiting to see what we get here. All right, Cliff Trop, Kemba's Outfitter. We hit for 10. Sword of Foreign Frontier is going to exile two more cards. We do have to pay for them, but that's totally worth it. Especially this Lion Sash. We can play this for free. Kemba's Outfitter. And who wants to equip for one? I think we're going to make... Um, excuse me. I need you to hide. Uh, we're going to make this, the Hero's Heirloom, equip for one. I can also play this as a land. I can also equip something. Uh, I'm just passing here because my plan is if they try to do something with their graveyard, I'm going to exile the permanent because I can. Oh, demonic tutor. Are you going to tutor for a board wipe? Yeah, probably. Meat Hook Massacre is my guess. Oh, no, they're going for an emergent ultimatum. Probably trying to combo out. Um, so this is very often what you see with Saltai decks. By the way, this does not actually seem so far much of a Moldrotha deck. Finding the old gods is great with Moldrotha. But this is just the bouncy, bouncy free spells. Yeah, sure. Enjoy your free spells. Uh, if they have it, they have it. If they don't, they don't. I'm going to throw the rebuke back into their deck. We'll see how many things they can play off the top. They get the one with the multiverse and Omni. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice free spells. Three spells, by the way, only from their hand, and then one from the top of their attack. That's the uh, one with the multiverse ability. Solemn Simulacrum grabs him a land and shuffles. Navigation Orb. You get them more lands. Ovenwald Hydra. Gets them more lands. Yeah, I'm noticing a theme here. There's a thing, there's lands happening. Mmm, a land. They don't have enough. Ah! They don't They don't have enough. Also, I'd be able to hit things in a graveyard. Oh, Hour of Promise. Tutoring out two more very specific lands. Trying to thin their top of the deck, I think, so they can find what they want. They've got one card remaining here. Yep, they're shuffling every day. Mm, it looks like they actually already did the one with the multiverse cast. So that's great for me. Okay, let's just uh, eat up a permanent from their graveyard. Gotta go fast. Binding the old gods. Do I want to use the treasure yet? No. I'm trying to think. Is there anything I could get here? That would make me happy. Oh, of course there's a spell that would make me happy. I think some of you already know what it is. Starts with Ember. And ends with Cleave. Oh, what a spell it is. Throw this on Nahiri. This is just uh, everything I've ever wanted and more. 
I feel like we just swing in here. Do, do you wanna? Do you want a little bit more? You want a little bit more? You've got protection. You don't. You're doing great. Let's, let's just swing in. Hey, everybody! Get in here. Hmm. Free helm of the host. Love that for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Doesn't really matter here. Uh, so we could go with the cleave on pretty much any of these for lethal. I think it's the funnest, though, if we put it on, um, on the Hiri. Just go ahead and munch up some stuff from graveyards. Yum. Yum. A munch. And a crunch. Is that all the permanents? Ah, uh, we're out of permanents. That's fine. It's still lethal. Good game, Muldrotha. Omnath, Locus of the Royal. This is a teamer commander who loves it when lands enter the battlefield, drawing you cards, making your elementals bigger, and, um, hmm, hanging out with me and all of my equipments. The bad news with this hand is that our mana's coming in tapped, which means that we're going to be going a little bit slow. The good news is we have a lot of low-cost equipment, some equipment that comes with little guys, and we also have Arm Scavenger, which will get us more equipment and make it cheaper. Um... Okay, a Sacred Foundry. I guess we can uh, set that up actually for turn two. I'm going to start with the Axe Guard Armory. Because this automatically equips, I don't feel like it's a huge rush for me to play it, even though it does discount Nihiri by one. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and shock this in. The shock, the awe, uh, the barbed spike. Hello, Barbara. Got ourselves a 2-1 Thopter now. Omnath, though, when he enters the battlefield, will be able to deal one damage, which spells uh, bad news for my softer here. Unless we give it hexproof and haste. Chris Barry command. Oh, they're taking out both parts, so that was a one for one. Um, that, that was a very uh, funky play there. They wanted to make sure I didn't have a token and they didn't have anything else either. I think that this is fine, though. We're gonna go for the boots. And I know I said before I'd love for this to be attached to something. I'm still just going to play it. Cliffhaven Kite Sail on the battlefield brings Nahiri's cost down to four, which means I can play her next turn, which I love. I'm a big fan of getting this Nahiri into play. Though I feel like they're going to counter her or kill her. And I probably want to wait until I have one more mana. Wait a minute. No counter spells? That's the kind of thing I like to see. They just tapped out with only four mana, so the only free counter spell would uh, kill them next turn. Or grab ourselves a mountain. And do we want to get armed and dangerous? Or just play our commander? I think I'm actually going to start with the arm scavenger. And we're going to arm him with some boots. And sure, he can fly too. It's not like I'm blocking this turn, so let's go in for a hit. Looking good. Omnath says, ooh, a land, but they do not have, is it seven lands yet? Sorry, eight lands. Uh, so they're not drawing a card off that joint exploration. It is going to get them another card, maybe another land into play. Omnath's getting funky and chunky. They shocked this in, ooh. Their life total is now lower than mine since I've shocked once and they've shocked twice. They also pinged me for one. No, brudda, why? Brothers Hood End and Farewell are two cards that are really rude against us. Um, I might want to go for the cheapest equipment here. Uh, so I'm going to go for the Spare Dagger. It's definitely not the best equipment here, but I want to just get a bunch of cheap equipment into play. Ba bam Kapow. Give him the stick. Throw down a Sokin's on. And swing in. No, I'm good. Nahiri back down to four. But I no longer have the boots for her. 
How am I supposed to be a cutie without my booties? Tragic. Omnath getting kind of funky, kind of chunky, kind of huge. And they are really digging here. Pirates pillage, tormenting voice. There's something they are looking for. What could it be? This is definitely not an elementals deck. This is definitely the spells version of Omnath. I've, I've run into this before. It's the deck. And they're swinging in for seven. I'm not going to block because I would like to have two triggers for Nahiri next turn. Maybe more. Uh, let's see. We've got Tormentor's Helm, Spare Dagger, and Dueling Rapier. Um... Take this hat. Hat in play. Nahiri's coming down. We could even put the hat on somebody because it's free! Yippee! None of these give haste. That's fine. We swing in and we get two triggers. Would I like to sacrifice it? No. Freya would have been nice to have before attacking. Play our land. I Ganjo. We're going to throw in this grab. And we're also going to move around a little bit of this equipment um, just to set up for some potential blocks and potential attacks and also survivability. Um, I'm bringing Nahiri's power and toughness up a little bit here. Um, it's easy for red to deal three damage. It's okay for them to deal four damage. But five damage, typically out of the question. Rayav, despite the double strike, is probably going to just be a chump blocker here. Oh, but it looks like we might need to go for a double block. Unless they don't attack in. I see. I'm not sure I understand. They're taking an extra turn. They didn't force a block out of me. Which means they've got something else planned. Into the Royal Nahiri's back into my hand. It only costs three mana, though, since we... Do still have some of these equipments out. An inspired idea. They're drawing. They have a uh, four card hand size. That's a cool thing there. Blink of an eye. I have no blockers and they hit for lethal. GG Omnath. They found the bounces that they need to win the game. Sarkhan, Soul of Flame, another March of the Machine Aftermath Commander, and this one's spicy. Make sure dragons cost less, and let Sarkhan become a copy of dragons that enter the battlefield, but only until the end of a turn. We're going to go ahead and get down the Arms Scavenger, who you will be generating more cheap equipment for me, and making it cheaper to re-equip those equips. All right, so let's see. We got Gold Vein Pick, Jousting Lance, and Shield of the Realm. I'm going to grab the Gold Vein Pick. All right, we also have a Foundry Beetle here. Oh, let's get down the pick. Anything that reduces Nihiri's cost is good in my book. Play down the Sejiri's Shelter. I meant to equip that so I would get a treasure. I did not. That's fine. P pretend I did. I'll, I'll hit them with an oops. An honest, ingenuine oops. Listen, it happens. Seize the spoils. They're discarding a land, getting a treasure, and drawing some new cards. Scavenge Blade, Ceremonial Knife, and Cliff Haven Kite Sail. I'll grab the Cliffhaven kite sail so I can believe I can fly. And so I can play Nahiri and get her to trigger this turn. But wait! Somebody has a spell for one mana. Somebody has a spell for one mana. Now I feel like this is probably either Wash Away, since blue, or Lightning Strike Red. Alright, Wash Away makes perfect sense. I'm not going to get the Nahiri trigger this turn. But thankfully, because of her affinity ability, we can reduce her cost even more. All right, we got a treasure. This time I actually remembered to equip it. We're fine. Dragon's Fire. No more guy giving me free equipment. Darn. Ooh, and Swiftfoot Boots to protect their Sarkhan when he comes into play. We could actually play Nahiri this turn and attack. No, we don't have haste. We can't attack with her. Uh, but instead, Blade Grab Aspirant, that's going to reduce the cost of the other equipments I cast, like Sword of Body and Mind. And we're just going to get down this Foundry Beetle, too. This is free to equip, since it gets its equip cost reduced by one if it's equipping to the Blade Grab Aspirant. And now we have the 3-4, Hits Makes a Treasure, Has Menace, and the Foundry Beetle, who's going to reduce the cost of this by one next turn. Nice! Sarkhan, Soul of Flame. I have this feeling they're not casting a dragon sister, and they're just getting out Sarkhan and protecting him. 
This does give protection from blue, though. So let's go ahead and get onto the battlefield. Or uh, I should say, just equip it. That way, can't block. We can still play Nahiri, and this will give me two triggers for her. One for each attacker. Let's see what we get. Shatter Skull Smashing. It's pretty much a land and a land. That, that one's a land. We mill them. We make a wolf. A woo. We also get some treasure. So you can uh, just use this to grab the Hex Gold Hover Wings. It's going to buff up all of my equipped creatures and give this one flying. And we're also going to be able to play Ragavan, dashing him out next turn. He's a good monkey. And everything's back in my hand. All right, we're back to, back to square zero. But they'll never expect the monkey, right? They would never expect the monkey. And would they especially expect a monkey, wait a minute, with a stick? I think not. Dashing and hitting for four, making a treasure, and exiling the top card and milling the ten cards. Ooh, an Inferno of the Star Mounts. That's going straight in the trash. Let's play the Basilisk Caller off of this treasure. Gotta love a monkey. Gotta love the monkey. They did not know the monkey was coming. We knew. We had the foresight of the dash of the monkey. Dragon Mage. Ooh, there goes my hand. Well, when it hits. And since Sarkane became a copy of Dragon Mage, they're hitting. We're gonna wheel. There goes everything. I will move Nihiri back here. She costs so much mana, by the way, because she keeps moving zones. Um, thankfully, oh goodness. I found more protection. We found the Sword of Forge and Frontier. This is actually a game saver, a game winner. This gives plus two, plus two. This gives plus two, plus two. That thing's red. It can't block. We're swinging in and it's lethal. Exactly. GG Sarkan. We're up against dinosaurs with Jasoth Sun's avatar. This is a very nice hand since it has this nice early rabbit battery. We have a very strong planeswalker, and we also have Ugin who discounts our colorless spells. Jasoth Sun's avatar, when it hits us, I say when because it's going to happen if we don't kill them first, gets them dinosaurs off the top of their deck. Any of them. That happen to be in the amount of cards that they deal damage equal to. I know that's like a hard thing for parsing, but that's how it works. Faithless looting. Let's draw. Let's discard. Let's look for more cheap, nice equipment. I think I'm going to drop Ugin and this land. Ugin's cool, but gotta go fast. ramping. I should expect to see some of the new dinosaurs too, by the way. We did actually manage to get dinosaurs printed in the last year, and since we're going back to Ixalan in two sets, I believe, Eldrain and then Ixalan, I think we're going to see more dinos. Alright, now we've got three equipment. Uh, we could either exile from a graveyard, we could equip them to each other, They have one, two, three, four, five, potentially six mana next turn. All right, I'm just gonna put the rabbit on the lion because that way I can swing in and get two entire damage in. My God, two damage. Marari's Wake doubles the mana from their lands. Um, I think we just get down to Hiri and have her go fast. So we get two triggers off of Nahiri, and we're also dealing eight damage. We found a Nettle Cyst and Kazul's Fury. Kazul's Fury I won't be able to cast, but I'll take free Nettle Cyst. It is a 4-4 four, four, since we have four artifacts and enchantments. But they have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. They can play Jasoth here. Do you think they'll hit me with the dino? Their dinosaur is vigilant, so like, it can also block. They don't even need to tap everything here. Look at that, they're even floating mana still. I think the big question for me is, do I block? I am going to block here, so only four damage goes through instead of the eight. So they only look at the top four cards and putting any dinosaurs. It's 
Uh, Zalortha! By the way, if you're wondering who this is, this is the promo Godzilla. I know, it's it does not have the same name here. Hmm. Nihiri lets me kill one of these. Nettlesis lets me swing. And try to get a trade. Try to get a trigger here. Do we just want to kill a dinosaur? They'll be able to replay dinosaurs. We got our Shishasaurus Rex here. Oh, I wanted it to use some of my red. That's fine. Oh, we're going to attack him with both. We found Kemba's Outfitter. Sword of Forge and Frontier. That's a very helpful sword for me to have. Very, very, very helpful. Because that is two of the three colors of their deck. Sword of Forge and Frontier. Sword of Mountain Dew and Doritos. Protection from red, protection from green, protection from dinosaurs and mana dorks. Looks like Nahiri's trading. Move my commander to the command zone. I'd love to, thank you. Go ahead and play the sword. Play this outfitter. Make it so one of these equips for one. Um, this equips for two normally. This equips for two normally. Um... I'll only be able to throw one on. And I think if we're going to choose one, it should be this. Equip for one. And uh, we've got protection from red, so you can't also give her the boots. So now Kemba won't be able to protect fully from Jasoth's damage. Because Trample would still go through, but Kemba's Outfitter won't die, which is... Big. Not dying is big. Still, they've got two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven damage or uh, mana. That's enough for pretty much any dinosaur. In fact, it is enough for every dinosaur. You got any Timmy cards in hand? Tapping for one red. One red. Two, three red. Why'd you need all that red mana? Cabaretty Revels! Ooh, okay. Cabaretti Revels with Galta and Maverin. Oh no! Found a humble naturalist off the Cabaretti Revels. When they swing in, they can make another eight. Oh my gosh, no, another nine nine because it gets buffed by the wake. Mm hmm. Okay, we'll prevent some damage. Am I dead? No, I'm not dead. But they might get enough dinosaurs to kill me. Let's find out. We have one free swing off of whoever has a sword. They completely whiffed on dinosaurs. Nihiri. Equipping. Swinging in. A swords to plowshares. Which tragically, I do not have the mana for. I can move over the sword. And that is it. We're about to die to the dinosaurs. I think we give them a little, a good game. A GG right here. Rhythm of the wild. Gotta go fast. Give a little bit of haste. Tyrannix Rex already had haste, but now it can't be countered. I mentioned before, we have some new dinosaurs. New dinosaur. New dinosaur. Some good stuff there. We take it. GG Jasa. Up against Tiamat. I think we played against the Tiamat earlier too, but the more the merrier. I love this gal. She's a dragon god. And she's pretty spooky. Uh, I'm going to start by playing the Cliff Haven Kite Sail. It does not have anything to equip to, but we can always pay mana to equip it to something. It gives flying. Mmm, a Sigarda's Aid, huh? Good card. Uh, I'm going to throw down the Arm Scavenger since it's going to reduce the cost of equipping things. And also give me an equipment each turn into the north. They're rampant. Tiamat, by the way, this dragon babe, she gets more dragons. She fills up your hand with dragons. It's pretty great. Shield the Realm gives a little bit of protection. Ceremonial Knife. It's a knife. It's cheap. Uh, I'll take a nice cheap knife. Regards, Zade. A knife. It equips for free. Let's go. 
Um, there we go. Get some flying. Might as well make a scavenger tron. Now we have a blood token. This probably won't get used for anything, but it's cool to have. Old steel heart. They're going to continue to ramp. Just trying to get more and more going on here. Let's see, we got a gold vein pick, rogue's gloves, and shield of the realm. Uh, since we get the free equip off of Sagarda's aid here, we can kind of go crazy with it. Ooh, we could also play a Chandra. Um, I'm eyeing what I want to play here. Rogue's gloves. Toss it on there. Plate armor. Swift foot boots. I think plate armor. Equips for free. It's got flash. Put them all on there. I mean, that actually would have equipped for free anyway, but still, very good. And we get to draw a card and make a blood. Yes, please. Great. Great stuff. Got two planeswalkers in hand. Some good stuff here in Boros. Nahiri only costs two mana. And we can throw a lot of stuff on her. Rex of Fate. Okay. That's part of why I wasn't playing more, because I knew we didn't need to. Get out of Nahiri, and let's give her some stuff. Let's give her, uh, boots. With the fur? With the fur. Mmm, a free bit of plate armor. Swing it in for eight. Land. Already played a land. But now she's got Hexproof and Haste and Ward. Wrathful Red Dragon. Any damage dealt to this dragon will get reflected to a target of their choice. Except for this. Um, not because it's a dragon, uh, but because she has Hexproof. Wrathful Red Dragon, though, currently blocking in my way. I cannot get rid of that. I don't have any evasion here. I can bring myself up to more damage, but it's already they have to block, and they'll reflect eight damage to my face. Oh, but it looks like they're actually good to go. They're saying, oh, I don't want to block. Bye. Nahiri. Dragon Slayer! Our opponent is about to start proliferating with Atraxa, Crater's Voice. This is a nice fast hand here, which is good because they're going to be playing some terrifying planeswalkers and we have to be ready for it. I'm going to play some Bone Splitter. Love a good bone splitter. And I love how it discounts Nahiri. Two mana, cold steel heart, they're ramping. So unfortunately, this Atraxa, who does proliferate and end stuff, has access to probably the scariest set of planeswalkers. Because yeah, there's some good planeswalkers with red. But they're not as good as the ones in Esper or Green or Demir or even in Orzov. Hi there, Atraxa. Atraxa also is a uh, flying 4-4 with flying vigilance, death touch, and lifelink. Scary stuff there. Now we could just go ahead and get rid of her here, and I think that's the best move we've got. If we let her stay out here, we're putting ourselves in a lot of danger, so I'm going to use some of my very rare removal here to take out Atraxa. So typically in this deck, rather than killing, we just make ourselves so big that our opponent can't deal with us. Nahiri down to three. We could get it in Brunor if we wanted a lot of damage here. Do I think that they have a counter spell? I'm going to say maybe, and it's better for them to counter my Nahiri since she can come back rather than Brunor. I think that they might have, um... I'd say Settled Wreckage, but they don't have the mana for it. Okay, Nahiri's in play. We're gonna do a nice big swing here. We get two triggers off of Nahiri. Get a Black Blade Reforge, nice. Any Kite Sail, Cliffhaven. Cliffhaven Kite Sail, I said that totally right. Looks like they didn't have an answer there, which was great for us, since we'd be getting these in for free, Brunor could come down next turn, and we'd be swinging for probably lethal damage across those turns. Even if they get rid of one of my creatures, they can't take them all out. GG, Atraxa. Brutaclad, a Telcor Engineer, and a very cool card when it comes to tokens. Brutaclad is on my to-build list, 
and he's a very expensive card, but very cool when he starts to work. Brutaclad makes a token each turn and then lets you choose to turn your tokens into another token. So if you manage to make a really big token, you can turn everything into that. Or you can make tons of non-creature tokens and then turn them all into creatures using Brutaclad. Tons of stuff you can do and hopefully we'll be able to survive and outpace even though they'll be going wide while we'll be going big. I have a card that's going to be kind of helpful when it comes to that though. I do have an Ember Cleave, which means that I can trample through and hopefully survive a bit in this game. Skrelv, by the way, can hold equipments and can also protect my other attackers, giving me fake protection. It gives it gives Hexproof and Unblockable by a color. And also it's dead. Uh, two damage and destroying an artifact. That sets me right back to where I was before. That's too bad. I'm going to play Blade Graph Aspirant now. Reduces the cost to cast my equipments, like this or this, but also lets me equip them for cheaper. Now, I could actually get the Ember Cleave down this turn, but I don't think that that's the best move for me. Uh, I think instead we're going to go for the Mall of the Skyclaves, if they kill it in response. Want to get that discount, though. Now, the Beamtown Beat Stick gets an equip one as long as it's equipping to this. So now we've got a... 5-5 five, five, Flying, First Strike, Menace, Chaos Warped. Okay, well now it's a land. That's extremely fair. That's extremely fair. Uh, I don't have anything here that gives haste, but I can make some things with haste. If I equip Valduk, Valduk for each equipment, it's a little guy. It's just a little guy, a little elemental. It goes away though, goodbye. But next turn we could get perhaps Another little guy? Maybe more? <laughs> Let's go ahead and play the boots. Reduce Nahiri's cost. Play her. And then put the boots on her. It looks like they might have a counter spell, though. Our opponent is kind of stuck on lands. But it's clear, clear that they kept this hand for a reason. And we're seeing that reason right there. All right, so the boots are going to go on Velduck instead, which means we're going wide. Yes, I am the tokens deck now, but my tokens um they, my tokens die each turn we get a treasure off of the beat stick they're saying i don't know where's my land i don't know where are my lands blow them a kiss Mwah. i got lands they had removal but sometimes flood beats screw not typically but it did work this time dratna founder of latinum Hello, Drafna. Drafna also really likes artifacts and can make copies of artifact spells. Uh, this is a slightly slow hand, but it has some really, really good card charts. We've got Hex Gold Sledge, Akiri, Sword of Forge and Frontier, and the Wandering Emperor. Not full of one drops, but we can take the slower approach in this game. All right, let's take this land. Oh, we've got two lands that can come in tap here. Let's start with the Temple of Triumph since it lets me scry. We're not wide enough, I feel, for Embercleave. We, we will be decently wide once we get the Hex Gold Sledge out, but if I can, I'd love to get at least one equipment out on turn two. Okay, Arcane Signet. They're ramping. And there's our first equipment that we can throw down. Swift Foot Boots, reducing the hero's cost to five from six. Now, I really wish that Sir Gwyn also had affinity for equipment. It just makes me really wish that she was a better card because I love... Sir Gwyn, but she just costs a little too much for me to play. We're getting some new knights, though, in the upcoming set. We'll have to see how they go. Um, Relic of Legends, followed by Drafna, maybe? Yep, here comes Drafna. Drafka can be tapped for blue mana from this. Uh, very good. We're going to build up our battlefield a little bit more. Hit the Hex Gold Sledge. Hex Gold Sledge, by the way, this is a... This is an arena-only card. But it's great. So Hex Gold Sledge makes, you know, a rebel token. That's pretty normal. Gives it plus one, plus zero. Oh. That seems regular for three mana. But it also puts a Goblin Gavalier onto the battlefield. This little dude you can actually put into your deck. And he's very cool. He makes things, uh, big. He makes himself very, very big. Boundary Inspector. It looks like they're going to be discounting their artifacts. We can also play spells like that in this deck. I'm not running that many of them. They have one, two, three mana here, and they can cast something that costs four. 
Phyrexian Metamorph. That costs four, but it looks like they, instead of trapping Drafna, uh, opted to pay the Phyrexian mana, and they made boots! Oh, are you gonna put boots on Drafna? That's a good idea. Protecting him seems like a very important part of the strategy. Uh, they're able to copy any any uh, artifact on the battlefield, so this makes sense to me. All right, now Drafna's got the boots. I can't touch him, and you know what? That's fine. Uh, I could throw down Nahiri this turn and swing in. Uh, I could go for SRAM and another equipment. I could play Akiri, who would also draw me a card on the swing. Um, and we also have things like the Wandering Emperor. We could throw it on the forge. I like a lot of this. I'm just going to get down Nahiri. Do what we do. Swing in and see what we hit off the top of the deck. It's just a command tower. I already played a land for turn, so it's gone. Looks like we're trading, too. Okay. My token for your foundry, Inspector. They have a lot of mana, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Says Relic of Legends. And they're discovering the formula. Puts three non-land cards into hand and discounts the entire hand by one. One of thought for Paradise for a low, low one mana. That's pretty good. Hmm. I like the idea of getting boots on a guy. So we're going to get boots on a guy. Um, I could also start chopping, or I could start flying. I'm going to throw down the Maul of the Skyclaves, have it automatically equipped to the Goblin Cavalier, so it becomes a very scary flyer. And we get a Lightning Bolt and a Mountain. Ah, perfect for casting a Lightning Bolt. I will play the Mountain, and I will Lightning Bolt the Ornithopter Paradise. It's good. It's a good card. It does three damage. Okay, now we've got even more. We we know that they're a mono blue deck. This doesn't give protection from blue. This is the sort of Mountain Dew and Doritos, so it's a protection from red and green. Not as helpful here, especially when there's things like these colorless creatures. Hello, Circuit Mender. Hmm, we've got Kemba's Outfitter. That can reduce an equip cost. Right now, uh, these guys have four damage between them and six toughness. Uh, I still think that the sword here would be great. Uh, I'll throw it on Nahiri. Let's we'll see if this gets countered, actually. No counter spells? Good. Excellent. We swing in. We've got two equipped attackers. We exile the top two cards. We've got a Bane Splitter, which we can cast for free, and it has flash. So let's see. Do you block? They're just preventing that damage. And we're going to go ahead and get the Bane Splitter onto the Gavalier, since it's going to increase by plus two, plus oh, and then plus two, plus oh again. That's a lot of damage in the air. What are you doing? Are you going to put that back into hand? Yes, they are. All right, so this person wants to draw cards off their Circuit Mender, gain more life, and keep copying it. This is a really, really great thing to do um, if you're playing this deck. It's bad for me, because they're gaining life, and they're going wide. Um... But, you know, this Gavalier might make it all the way. We might want to put the Swiftfoot Boots onto this little guy. Ooh, but they're tutoring. What do you tutor for? An instant or sorcery? Any instant or sorcery from their deck. It's River's Rebuke. They have exactly six mana with Drafna. And everything's going back into my hand. All right, fine. This really stinks because it does undo all my discounts on Nahiri. And I don't really have that much with haste other than what we can do with the boots. Um, I'm still going to go with the boots, though. So we're going to Gavalier. Boots. Boots on a guy. He's getting bigger. Just a little more. We're going to swing in for seven. Some of that damage does go through. They can block some of it. My Gavalier is gone, but don't worry. We've got more. We can either go with Kemba's Outfitter to reduce an equip cost. Um, you can bring this to one, bring one of these down to one. Or we could play Sram. If you're wondering, why not play Sram? First, I don't need any more cards in hand. I've got plenty of cards in hand. All I have is cards in hand. And I have this feeling that Sram's going to go uh, chopping next turn. Going to go to Sky Mall. Alrin's Epiphany. Well, okay, maybe not next turn, because next turn's not my turn, it's their turn. Emery lets them replay artifacts from the graveyard, and threw in Mindstone into the graveyard, okay. 
They've got Ornithopter, Foundry, Inspector, and that big fancy Brock. They can also tap for mana because Relic of Legends, she's a legend. Relic of Legends having the ability on the mana rock causes the untap thing to be stapled to this and ignore Summoning Sickness, which is really strong. All right, cool. Circuit Mender, they're going to gain some life and they're going to get to draw a card if they put that back into hand. They're up to nine life. They've got a whole Storm Giants too, by the way. I should I should keep an eye on my life total, but for the most part, we are the aggressor. Oof, a flyer, two flyers. Bad news, I don't have any more trample. Um, I would have to find some tramples somewhere else in the deck. They're eyeing their graveyard. I think thinking, who do I want to bring back? I think if they wanted to bring back Foundry Inspector, they could have done it first for bigger discounts. I think they're just doing it now anyway. They're tapped out. That's good for me. Uh, SRAM is just like, please, please don't hurt me. Don't worry, SRAM. You will be hurt. Um, I think we're going to throw down the Sky Mall. See what we draw. Blade Wrath Aspirant. It reduces, um, it reduces the cost of in the uh, equipment spells, which is kind of nice. So we've got Nahiri down three mana here. I'm attacking with both of these because I believe in the cleave. That's not never cleave. That's not never cleave either. I believed and you failed me. How dare you. I don't know if they want to double block. I think they do because they can bring things back. Did I put Embercleaf to the bottom in this game? Oh, I did. For some reason, I thought I had shuffled the deck at that point. We can believe in the cleave, but we can't believe in my inability to remember which cards I've played. Which is strong, very powerful, very good. Kemba's Outfitter. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the equipment cost of a card in my hand. Let's go with the Sword of Forge and Frontier. The Outfitter's just vibing, though. She's a good cat. Good cat. Uh, the big thing that the cat can do is make a Colossus Hammer only cost one to equip. Ah, also we're dead. Um, these two are dead, at least. Um, Portal to Phyrexia is going to be able to reanimate a creature from either player's graveyard each turn. But on Enter the Battlefield, it's just taken out my two. I don't have anything left to block. We still have a haste to give her here, the Swiftfoot Boots, which is going to kind of force them to keep back at least one blocker, which is good. Ooh, the Hostess with the Mostess. If only you were in hand before, that would have been sweet. Um, I'm looking at what I've got here for some potential fun. I've got some trample available off this. I'm wondering if it'll be enough. We get our Gavalier. We can give him the little booties so we get some haste. That costs three to equip. This costs one to equip. And it will have some damage go through. We're swinging in. It's the Gavalier. The double block means that this will die, but we are dealing some face damage, which means that the Sword of Forge and Frontier will trigger. We get to cast or play extra turn. Nope, nothing. Okay, great. Didn't get very deep in there. That's okay. We're going to put the boots on our one remaining creature, and they're going to bring back a creature. Sram... Gavalier, Outfitter, Mirror, Inspector, Circuit Mender. Lots of different choices here. This gaining them life seems good to me. I just noticed something, that this is gaining them three life and not two. This must be an alchemy revisit of this card. I already thought that Circuit Mender was pretty good. Yeah, 
back up to eight life. Sky scanner returns more blockers. I've got one, two, three, four, five mana remaining. What are you going to do with it? They could play and copy. Well, they can't copy because they've already uh, tapped, but they could put something back into hand, cast it again. Maybe put the circuit mender back, play it again, keep gaining all that life. Really putting me in a bit of a board stall here, Drafna. Sky scanner can keep getting them more lands. It's very cute. Nope, Sky Scanner's back. Rayav, giving things double strike. Double strike doesn't do it though. Uh, what we really need is evasion. Uh, and since I don't have evasion, we're going to just start trying to get more stuff. So we'll play Nihiri. Uh, I am going to throw down Rayav. I do technically have this as an equip one. Uh, but I don't think I need to here. I think I'd rather hold open the four mana for Wandering Emperor and take out Emery right now. See what we get. I know I could have given another thing haste. We got Hex Gold Halberd. That gives me trample for a future turn. That's really big. Um, okay. I guess I could just give this a little buff right here. Since they want a triple block. I think they just want to take out one of my creatures. I don't really need this creature on the battlefield, though. I think it makes more sense for me to take out Emery. They've still got more graveyard recursion, but at least I can take out some of it. Oh, but they have a Pact of Negation! At least we can cast this for free, get ourselves an equivalent token. Behold, a rebel! Do they have enough mana to put this back into hand and recast it? I think they do. Since I have exactly three creatures here, uh, they could blast my battlefield. Um, it costs two, so imagine that they uh, they use these two for that. Then they have... One, two, three, four, five. Not enough this turn, but they might off a Paradox Engine if they get their loops going. And I know how much these decks love their loops. Paradox Engine. It's a card that shouldn't be in this format. Paradox Engine is um, a card that is actually banned in Commander because it causes extremely long turns that don't necessarily go anywhere. Um... <laughs> yeah, they, they're they going to be able to uh, do a lot here, though, because they can keep putting things back into hand and recasting them. They essentially have infinite mana this turn and uh, can bounce everything back into their hand and keep on going. It's a dirtle machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to fast forward until they're done with their turn, however long that takes. So let's just wait here and uh, find out, I guess. Oh, I have to choose to put my commander back. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go back to making coffee. Two damage by two damage, they'll win this card game. Looks like our opponent found a meteorite, which deals two damage on enter the battlefield, which they can repeatedly cast and use to pay for itself. And since they've got so much bloat and mana, they just gotta press QQ each time. Don't need to do much, clone things with Drafna and let Paradox Engine take care of the rest. They 
could have killed me right there, but they chose to draw cards instead. And there we go! The final pair of meteorites! And we lose the game. I'd say GG, Drapna, but unfortunately you are playing Paradox Engine, which I just don't really like. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars! As always, if you'd like to watch me record this live, you should come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian, where I play Magic almost every day. And if you happen to watch my stream a lot, you can submit decks. I'll play them, and if I love them a lot, maybe I'll even turn them into my own version of the deck. I was actually planning on brewing Nahiri, but having that jumping off point was really, really fun. So it was great to get to play this deck. Uh, I'd love to see what other people end up doing with it. And I'd actually love to play this in paper. I have a lot of these cards already in paper because I play a SRAM deck. Yes, I'm a SRAM gamer. That probably doesn't surprise anybody. I love Naya stuff and SRAM is extremely fun when it comes to equipments and vehicles and auras. Thank you again so much for watching and have a brutal day.